Hey, what's up everyone? It's Jeremy Seiner and today I've got a brand new Watch Me Work video for you. What are we doing? Well, we're diving back into Substance Designer where we're going to create this tileable ship nautical hull paneling texture. That was a lot to say, uh, but I'm really excited to share this one with you. It sort of takes us back to the basics of how to use Substance Designer. So if you're brand new to Substance Designer or you kind of want to get reacquainted with how this node-based texture creation software works, check out this video. It's a little long. It's about 50 minutes to an hour. Now, if you don't want to watch the whole thing from start to finish, I've got some time codes in the description below. You can check those out and skip to whatever section you desire. Now, without further ado, Let's run the brand new Watch Me Work video intro. All right, everyone, let's get started. So I, uh, I've got this... Um, this piece of software here called Pure Ref, and that's what I use to get on my reference. And usually when I start these videos, I already have my reference, but I figured I'd record uh, the process of getting reference this time. So uh, I've literally gone into Google and I've typed in metal paneling, because that's what we're making. Uh, I hope that spelling's correct. And I just want to gather some reference uh, because, oh, that's a good one, because it's always good to work off of reference. So this is paneling of a vintage airplane. So literally, I'm just gonna click on it, drag it in. That's good. Uh, what else do we have here? I saw something interesting a second ago. I wanna grab this one. Uh, wait a second. There we go. And I'm just gonna make a little bit of a mood board, reference board. Pure Ref is wonderful. It has all these handy features like alignment and zooming and labels. In fact, I want to go back up to that old airplane one and see what else I can find that's related to it. Um, here's a close up of those uh, divots, rivets. I don't know exactly what the term is. Let me put that next to there. And I want to go back to this one again. So this one's a bit more complicated, and I'm not really looking to do that quite yet. But let's add it just to be safe. It doesn't cost me anything to just keep it in my reference. Um, what's that one? Interesting texture, interesting kind of like noise pattern in the roughness. So I'm going to keep that. Uh, and you can go down the rabbit hole and just get as much reference as you want. I don't think I'm going to be using this intense of a uh, um, amount of these these spots. These uh, I don't know. I have to have to figure out and decide what I'm going to call these. But let's go back here. I might come back to that in a little bit. Right now we have this. Yeah, Pure Ref is wonderful. Let's see what else we have. Metal wall panels. Uh, that one's fine. Let's put that in here. And I can type in, this is just one, one keyword, two keywords in Google Images. Okay, let's look at, let's do ship hull. Close up. That's what I meant. Oh, I saw a neat image. Okay, let's look at that one. Okay, that's a bit more destroyed than I'm looking for. Okay. So I'm going to zoom out here, make a new section of images. That's a big one. No, maybe not. Not as big as I thought. These are cool. They're a bit more rusty. I'm not really looking to add damage yet with this texture, but this is good to have. Uh, because you can kind of get an idea of what it would look like without the damage. So yeah, this is sort of my process of gathering reference for making materials. 
And this is going to be all damaged and I want to get cleaner, cleaner hull. That might be a good one. Yeah, that's a good one to have. I'm sort of looking for a combination of like this kind of a smooth hull, maybe not so many of these dots. Because if you look, you can't really see that many. I'm not quite sure. Uh, cool. Okay, I'm going to look at this one. Hopefully this is enough. I can always come back and get more reference. And we'll start playing around in Substance Designer in a minute. All right, so let's start off with something like this. Okay, so we've got our reference uh, basically set up here, this nice board. And I think it's time to start playing around in Substance Designer. So I have it open here. Let's call this ship paneling. We'll start with 2K and we'll stick with the physically based metallic roughness template. Wonderful, here we are. So the first thing I like to do is create a base material. And this is what I use to uh, view my substance in as I'm working on it, and then distribute these outputs into the substance outputs. So starting off, uh, if you've seen my last substance designer, uh, watch me work video, you will have noticed uh, frustratingly enough that I I kept using this metallic value when I shouldn't have. It was up all the way. I was doing a mossy grass material and there's no metal. This time, however, there is metal. So I'm going to be paying, playing close attention to this metallic value. Uh, as you can see, as I slide it uh, to the right and left, you get more of a metallic image. If I hold shift and control and right click. You can rotate your HDRI. That is, uh, reflecting light off in this sort of scene. You can see if I take the metallic down, how much that really changes the material. We're gonna keep it up for now because this is going to be a metal. I'm not sure just how much yet. So if we take a look at our autosave is enabled. All right, let's save. So now if we look at a reference, let's see what sort of common themes we have here. So none of this, except for this one, is very smooth. And not even that, it's it's still a bit rough. So if we look at our roughness, we can play with that value. Now the, the less we have this roughness value, the more reflective it gets, the more shiny it gets, rather. Um, if we look at our, now that one's a bit more like that, but if you look at these, there's a whole lot of noise and a whole lot breaking up the roughness. Um, we've also got these panels and Looking at the hulls of these ships, uh, they don't really have any spaces or gaps in between them. They have this sort of bumpy outline, which is good for tiling, literally tiles. See here, they kind of have this outdent. So we're going to look and see how to do that. What else am I noticing? Yeah, so this is a bit rough, but I got this image here because I wanted to see a bit of the texture and where these rivets are. This is a good one. You see this out dent here. And this is an aircraft hull, but it has a it has kind of a similar principle. Now this one has is more like they're putting panels on top of each other. Um, so we can have a little bit of fun with that if we want to. And then this one I like just because of the texture of the metal. So what's the best way to go about this? Well, we can start with some tiles. Maybe if I try this tile generator. Now that's too many tiles. Um, now it's getting a bit blurry. Let's see. Let's create a normal node that we're going to pump right into. Let me enable it first the normal of this base material. You can see immediately we already have something happening here. Um, but let's also increase the intensity of the normal map. And we might increase it a bit more. Let's try like, let's go for 10. I'm going to play around with that value in a little bit. 
it's a it's a lot right now i realize uh, but we'll, we'll see how that goes and then we want a i guess the height so enabling height and if i just pump this into the height we're not going to see too much of a change and and i'm also not young so if i go into my materials and i click edit we are using parallax occlusion we're not using tessellation if i choose bump up the scale you'll see what happens things start to change very drastically on here so let's give it I don't really know how much I'm really these things aren't going to have this this material itself isn't going to have um, a crazy amount of height but anyway I need to do something with this because it's way too blurry so let's try doing I'm going to clamp it down with a histogram let's try scan and let's change the position immediately you can see we're just using we're basically taking a levels node and we're crunching it together and we're just scanning through the range of the histogram and what's really cool is you can clamp things down so look at that you got the blurry part you got this now unfortunately I got this round corner which I don't really want if I increase the contrast. But I can show you what's happening here. If I put this in the normal node and the height, and we zoom in, this is what we're getting now. And as I adjust this contrast, you'll see that it gets sharper. And I can change the position. Now that's interesting. If I choose a position down here, it gets a sharp corner and the contrast interesting um, now I'm not a fan of it being just one square so if I go into this tile generator and I make it two uh, let's try two by two okay size there we go a scale it's not quite what I'm looking for. Also, I have this circle in the middle I'm not a fan of. Maybe if I just choose brick. And take the scale down. Much better. And maybe I won't need to use the uh, histogram scan anymore. I just want a little bit. Oh, now there we go. So this is just the tile sampler, uh, tile generator, sorry, different note. So I deleted the histogram scan. Now we've got some panels and this is more close to this. Uh, now we're gonna start roughening it up. And then we also, I also wanna connect them. So what I can do now then is I can, maybe I can invert this, let's say, Invert grayscale. Plug it in there. So now what if I, if I do this, I'll get the opposite. I can, uh, it doesn't look quite different, but I'm getting the opposite effect here. So I'm gonna take this current, this thing, which is the opposite. These are the grooves around here. And I wanna apply a noise to it. So what kind of noise do I want? Let's go to our noises and scroll through. Pardon my occasional sniffling. I'm coming down with a cold right now. So there's the grooves. I want to look back in here again. You can't really see. Those images weren't the, the highest quality. That's pretty good, though. Okay. Yeah. Nothing too sophisticated. Well... I'm hesitant to use that cloud. Let's try clouds too. Let's get blend. And now in the, I think about how I'm gonna do this. 
foreground and the background. You see that we're blending these two together. And I don't want to use copy. I think I want to use, let me try multiply. Maybe that's the right one. I'm curious what happens if I now blend, let's reorganize. This guy in the background, this guy in the foreground, and choose Well, we yeah, might need to mess with this a little bit. Okay, so we're getting somewhere. We've got now we've got some craziness going on. And I want uh I actually want to disrupt these clean lines. So to disrupt these lines, I've got a couple ideas. But one of the ways to do that, I'm thinking, because I'm isolating that mask here that I made where I inverted the tile generator and added some clouds to start to make this happen down here. Let's add a, let's try slope blur grayscale. Okay, slope blur grayscale. Let's take this clouds. Okay, so obviously that's a little too intense. Actually, yeah, look at that. Getting something similar to my reference. Maybe a bit too intense, so I might blur it, but let's see if we can add it on. So now this is the mask. Let's replace this connection, which I can't see. There it is. Replace this connection. Now that's cut the noise. And maybe I don't actually need this blend at all. If I just do this. So I've kind of circumvented this one. And maybe my normal map is a bit intense right now. Let's dial it back a little bit on the intensity. Let's just try one for now. And this is pretty reflective. So let's, uh, let's go to this material. Let's increase the roughness, still metallic, but the roughness is a bit higher. Sure. Not quite sure how rough I want to get quite yet. I have a feeling it's more rough because there's paint on it. And I'm going to go back to my height scale and make this one for now. Excellent. So look at that. Okay, we've already got some paneling, and I'm looking at this on a cube. These panels are a bit more rectangular. And this is aircrafty. But yeah, you can see they're not right square. They, they do have a bit of a width to them. So right now, I'm actually very impressed with this. However, no, no paneling on any ship is ever this flat. So let's make a base noise. And actually, this is looking a bit crazy. Um, let's try point three. Point one. Just add it down a little bit. Less is more in this case. And we can fiddle with that all we want. In fact, I can add this as a property that you can change in your uh, 3D software, and you can adjust it. And that is really cool. Oh, that's why I love Substance so much. Look at that. That's more like it was underwater for many, many years. OK, let's undo that for now, though. Make it cleaner. This is new paneling. And also, uh, it, it is coming out a lot from the, yeah, from the surface. But let's, let's adjust that after we add the overall 
bending and morphing of this paneling because you can see it's not flat at all. So let's take a look at the one, the only Perlin noise. And let's scale it way up. That's a little too much. Let's try that. We can adjust the disorder in a little bit. And let's blend it in with, uh, with what we've got going on here. Let's start organizing. What is that? We're not using this guy anymore. We'll delete that. Okay, so we've got the lines here. We've got the base here. Let's blend these together. We'll put this on the bottom and then put this one on the top. Shift click to borrow those. And let's dial back this opacity so we can start getting some significant changes. Now I wonder if my scaling now isn't enough. Let's go with like 10 and see what happens. Okay, now we're getting something. If I increase the scale, okay, a little bit, a little bit of variation. All about tweaking. I like that better. Oh, that's 31. <laughs> Let's try. See, the more I increase this this map, actually, the more of that Perlin noise you're getting, and which means I'm just going to have to blur this this a little bit because that's just a bit crazy. But that's starting to get somewhere. You can see now it's, it's the imperfections are coming along. Uh, so let's deal with this. Perhaps that's all in the opacity. I can dial down. Now we're getting somewhere and it's actually looking a bit too reflective right now. So let's go back into our roughness value. Let's turn it up so it's more rough. And let's hold control and shift. Still very shiny. And that's also part of the metallic value. Let's bring down the metallic value. Do we keep it high? I don't know, guys. I'm still learning. Shinier. Rough. But still very metallic. And there's numbers that I can use for this, too. I'm just eyeballing it now. Um, let's try looking at this on a flat plane. high res. Maybe this is just a bit too much. Let's... I want it to be a hint of imperfections right now. And you can always add more later. This is just overall. Okay, and let's go back to rounded around a cube. Okay. Cool. Great. Okay. Taking a look back at our reference now. Let's, uh, let's deal with this interesting reference in these scratches. I'm not quite sure how I want to do that yet. We've got these rivets. You don't see any rivets there. You just see a lot of imperfection. And interestingly enough, look at how this is broken up into more squares. I wonder if I could do that. Let's get another tile. Do I want to do tile generator? Scale random. Color ran can I do like a color random? Luminance random. 
Ah, <gasps> perfect. That's exactly what I want. Okay. So instead of choosing the default preset of brick, let's go with square. I want less of these. Let's do four by, well, right now I'm just doing everything, everything even four by four, but that's still too much. Let's do three by two. Mm -hmm. I, need to, I need to fix that too. Hmm. Let's have a little bit of a play real quick. I want to blend this guy with what we have so far. Let's just see what happens. Let's take these in. And let's Bring the opacity down. Okay, so that's different. So having these multiple um, luminance values, basically from white to black, it adjusts the height and therefore gives more of like a pan look. Now I'm not quite sure if I want it to come out like that, because if you look here, they're all still connected. You're, they're just, they're just a, at a different angle. If I take a blur high quality grayscale and drop the intensity down. Yeah, see, that's not what I wanted. Interesting, when I take the intensity up, this guy really goes deep into the, uh, into there. I could take a levels and just chill it out a little bit. Still not quite sure if that's what I'm going for, though. Maybe the blur is not what I really want. Although I do sort of like how how that looks. We'll see how that goes. OK. But I'm losing my, I'm losing my detail now. These panels are are too square for my liking. Let's go all the way back to the initial, this guy. And what if I just say that there are mm, three? And there are only one. Okay, wait, I'm doing this wrong. You can see how cool this is. You can just start multiplying these things. Not too much. Okay, and now we've lost this because it's the same. I just want it to be really subtle. We can go into this tile generator, we can go to the color setting, and we can affect the luminance random. So we can adjust how intense, intense it is by how much. And I really actually don't want it by that much. This is what it originally is, which is cool. I can remember that for later. I do like the idea of just making it really subtle. Cool. Gonna start there. Okay. Now we can use this paneling on anything. That's what's really cool about it. Here's a round cylinder now made out of this, these panels. Let's try looking at it on a, let's see, where's that sphere that are like two tile sphere. Cool. We can go into adding like much more detail. So see how this is very smooth still. And now let's get into adding some of the micro texture, this kind of stuff for the paint. Let's get into doing that next. Okay, so for the micro texture, let's see, I'm gonna start spacing some things out because I'm not quite as organized as I'm usually. 
Um, let's get, let's get a clouds noise. Let's see, do I want clouds one? Maybe. For this scale, I can just make it really small. And let's blend it in. And this guy. So we'll put that in the foreground. Put this in the background. And let's just borrow these, holding shift. Okay, now everything's crazy now. I want to go back to my normal rounded cube, because that's kind of how we're looking at things. Now it's all crazy right now, but let's dial down the opacity a whole lot. Oh, now doesn't that completely just transform the whole thing? Now I'm, I'm losing my panels, but that's okay, the small panels. But this already looks a lot more, a lot better. I'm gonna take this and I'm going to do a levels on it. And I'm really going to, there we go. Okay. Now that is bringing some of the texture that I was just looking at here, especially in this one, this paint texture. And uh, I can even go as far as to like start clipping, clipping it down a little bit. That's interesting. You can make it more dirty. You can really fade it out. I'm gonna undo that. Really clip down specifically what I'm looking for. Now that actually had an op, now you can reverse it. And that has a neat effect as well. So if I reversed it, do I like that better? If I look at this image for the paint, you see there's some flat sections and then there's some of the underlying paint. So I think I am gonna end up clipping this a little so that there's a flat point like that it's right here. Here's the flat part. Here's the underlying paint. Let's play with a scale. I use a scale of one. Looks a bit too low resolution. If I use a really high scale, uh, let's look at that. That's not bad, actually. Let me clip this a little more and see what that does. Oh, that looks great. I don't really like that. I'm gonna go overboard first before I bring it back. It's very subtle. I don't know if you can tell through YouTube. I'm trying to move in. I'll zoom in as much as I can. Yeah. So there's less clipping, more clipping, and I can define these a bit more by bringing this part of it down. That's really great. I'm gonna save that. Cool. Uh, not sure if I'm going to start doing some damage like this right, right away, but uh, now I want to adjust the roughness because right now it has the same roughness across the whole thing. So if I go, if I enable the roughness map, so let's go roughness. You see immediately we're completely smooth. So we've got a new input here for roughness. I'm going to reorganize this so this stays up here. Height stays down. All right. I want a new blend. And to get some control over this, what if I just pipe in? That's just without even thinking about it. Just pipe that in. Okay, so that's what that did. And that's not what I want. Let's take this guy and 
And let's get uniform. Uniform color, but I want it to be grayscale. So grayscale. There we go. Let's blend these together. I actually think that's exactly what I want. Okay, so let's pipe that in. Now, the reason why I did this now, finally catching up to why. If I take this blend and I dial back the blend, it gets rougher. And now if I dial it more, it gets shinier and smoother, which is neat. It now goes with this texture, but I don't necessarily want it to go with just this texture in terms of its roughness. I also want it to go with another pattern that I'm going to blend together with this. So what kind of pattern am I looking for? Let's take a look at scratches. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Unplanned, but directional scratches. I think before I get to this blend, I want to blend those noises together. So let's take, put this in the background, put this in the foreground, dial down the opacity. So we, now we have scratches, put that in here. And now you can see where the scratches are coming into play. I can increase the scale of these scratches. I don't know if I want to do that. That's interesting. Disorder pattern amount. That's cool. Oh, I see what it's doing there. It's only adding a few scratches. We can change the angle. So the overall roughness is still a bit high. So let's take it down. Okay, getting somewhere, playing around. Oops. Yeah, still very, very shiny. So now we're just gonna start dialing in these So this is about as rough as I can get. And that's still pretty rough. Let's amp up the scale by a ton. Let's stretch out them a lot more. So let's set the base roughness. So this is like completely rough. This is getting some light. Getting some reflectivity from the sun, that's good. And now let's add a little bit of scratches. You can see subtle. Subtle, but now we've got that extra bit of detail. And of course, there's all scratches. Yep, and I can crunch this down because you can see it's adding roughness. Oh, well, and instead of using copy, what if I do add? Yeah. So just in the, the lights, I can also do subtract. I like that better, actually. Let's keep that. Great. So now we have roughness with our pattern. If I Disable the roughness. This is what we were working with before. This is what we have now. Now let's take a look at here. And if I look at my reference again, sometimes I get carried away with these textures. 
And I forget what I'm doing. There's tons of paint on here. This paint is adding. It's taking away a lot of this shininess. Um, and you can see there's not that many scratches. Of course, now we're looking at a different part of the hull. You can see we've got some lines here. Starting to think that um, this is a bit too uh, intense in terms of height again. Yeah. 0.7. Yeah. And let's just lighten it a little bit. That's what this is. Okay. Let's take a step back and look at this thing. Okay, so looking at these scratches, I'm thinking less is more. And so what I'm going to, what I mean by that is I think I'm just going to take this and drop it all the way down to about as low as it can go. I think that's a better option. Just looking at these different references. I mean, this this doesn't have very many scratches. These ones actually go up and down these lines, which is neat, but this is a different kind of metal that I'm going for. I'm going for much more of a painted over look like this one. So just a little bit of that variation in the roughness is going to make a big difference. And let's take a look at it on the, uh, the rounded cylinder again. Looks good. Let's look at it on high res plane. And this is definitely going to tile well, I think. And this is a, this is 2K, uh, this texture. So we can make this even more uh, in uh, high resolution if we want to. But I don't I don't think we're going to see it that closely, at least not with what I have plans to use it for. Um, here, we'll just take a look at that sphere again. It looks great on the sphere. Maybe uh, at some point I'll start adding some rust and things, but I think as of right now, adding this to my ship model is already going to add so much detail. Uh, so let's play a little bit with adding some color next. Okay, so in terms of adding color, uh, we're going to use a new input. Um, do I want to? I want to group these. Yeah, I do. I'm going to frame. Let's call this big panels. I'm going to call this little panels. And we're going to call this small detail. And let's just bring that down. And these are the scratches. I could probably put the scratches in the small detail. Uh, and this is actually going just into the roughness. So scratches. Excellent. Let's move everything over. And let's start looking at color. So our final height map is only is only this, and it's very subtle. You can you can hardly see anything. Uh, but let's go and get a gradient map. Oh, well, let's enable our base color. Now immediately you can see this is now black, and that does look pretty cool. Uh, Let's uh, let's see if we can change that. In the input, I want this guy. You see, it's going from black to white right now. And uh, let's put this into the color gradient editor. Let's look at these keys. Let's see. Let's get the black to be. Well, let, let's just let's just see what this is going to do. 
blue uh, it doesn't look really that great <laughs> um yeah let's just start adding some colors because okay so there we go now this is just adding some variation let's add some some dark blue for the for that but yeah okay so now we've got some kind of like almost aluminum looking thing adding some color really does actually change how i'm I can see this thing. So if I go into my metal metallic thing and I just dial this down a little bit. Now we're getting somewhere. Still shiny, still has some metal feel to it, but now it feels more like it's a solid piece instead of where it was at before, where this sort of looks like a different kind of material now. So let's redo what I did. It's looking better. You see the variance in color. Uh, and now that I've done that, and let me look at my reference again. See what kind of material we're getting here. We're getting somewhere. Okay. If I do a solid, like, well, I'll do something similar. So let me take the this color and make it more red. go to the, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Take this down to red. Yeah. So what I really want it to be is um, an off-white. Um, so let's bring this back. It's not going to be black, but let's bring it to an off-white. And the highest one is still pretty white. And we just have that subtle shift in color and we're getting an off-white. If I were to turn off what we did, that's what we had originally. Made it a bit more white, added a little bit more variance. And that's kind of what I'm going for. The reflectance is a bit high. So let me go back to my roughness. All right, so let's take a look at this on the sphere again. I think it looks the best on a sphere, funnily enough. <laughs> I think everything usually does in the material, but there you go. Okay, so we got our color. We got our scratches. We've got our roughness. Now let's, uh, let's export this into the proper maps. So let's put the base color, the base color, normal into the normal. Roughness, metallic. You know what? I didn't do any ambient occlusion. So I'm going to try and, well, let's see what that does. I might not need to do it, but let's try it. So let's create a new output. And I'm just gonna put it, oop, and I'm just gonna put it right here. And uh, the output is, let's say ambient, AO ambient occlusion we'll call it uh, yeah I think it's how you spell that right and we'll put this in here uh, we didn't actually give it any ambient occlusion so let's do that let's enable ambient occlusion this is all gonna go crazy okay and from the height so let's let's uh, take our height map we'll drop it in here and Put it in there. Yeah, now that adds a little bit of definition to it. So if I toggle this on and off, you'll see, yeah, there's a little bit more information. I'm pointing at the screen, but you can't see it. There's a little more information here. Let me look at it on the rounded cube. Subtle, but cool that's enough yeah let's look at it from a distance that I'm gonna look at it at in the rendering and let's look at the reference 
can dial it back a little bit if I want to later. It works with and without. Let's save. And I'm going to say view outputs in 3D view. This should look exactly the same. Now I'm not relying on this thing anymore. I'm relying on all these outputs. And I can save this out as a substance. So there you go. All right, so I wanted to add a little bonus section to this video. I'm in Cinema 4D and I've got Redshift fired up here. And I just made this little uh, little demo scene to show you what it looks like when I bring this straight into Redshift. I literally uh, used Cinema 4D's uh, substance engine load substance this tool and then converted what, what what i got into a redshift material by literally going to redshift uh, materials tools convert materials i just applied it to a plane and a cylinder and i'm using bucket mode here and uh this is what you're getting and it looks pretty good actually the quality is a lot higher than i thought it would start off with by a 2k texture uh, but as you can see uh, with our hdri enabled you've got the streaks here uh, within the uh, the roughness and uh, if we apply this to multiple uh, surfaces so let me take my focus null i'm just gonna move it over here a little bit you can see we've got all of the detail coming around so you can see how it reflects to light there we go very impressed with how quickly this renders and um, and the streaks in the reflectance channel but yeah I just wanted to show this off in a uh, in redshift in cinema 4d and we'll be applying it to a render soon. So there you have it. Thank you all so much for watching. If you're interested in watching more Watch Me Work videos of this kind of series, check out the playlist or subscribe to my channel and hit the bell if you're interested in hearing when I make new videos. Uh, I've got plenty more tutorials and vlogs and other 3D things coming on up while I'm sailing around the world. I'm currently in New Zealand, going back from Sydney, Australia to New, to new Zealand, doing lots of traveling, lots of fun stuff. And uh, there you have it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.